ESN TV coverage of the 12th Annual Consortium for School Networking Conference is sponsored by Smart Technologies, N Computing, and CCC Video On Demand in cooperation with Cable in the Classroom and Consortium for School Networking. The COSIN Data-Driven Decision-Making Initiative was started about four years ago in 2003, and our goal is really to help bring together the best practices and the best ideas for using data within school organizations to improve uh, teaching and learning. And, uh, create a place where everyone can go to find out more information and share best practices. Uh, the initiative is sponsored by several different companies, IBM, Dell, SAS, Pearson, uh, Schoolnet, and Texas Instruments. And uh, we have had hu literally hundreds of school districts go to the uh, data-driven decision-making website and uh, use our self-assessment survey to find out where they are in the process of adding data-driven decision-making to their, their school district. This eSchool News interview from the 12th Annual COSIN Conference will continue after this message. The interactive whiteboard is immediately impressive. They have found an increase in student participation, and that is also translated into higher test scores. Synchronize is a classroom management product that runs on the laptops of the students as well as the teacher. Synchronize allows that teacher to, to effectively manage the students in a one-to-one -one environment. Bridget is our conferencing software. Bridget really becomes a, a very valuable tool for delivering online learning. The Sentio student response system allows the teachers to present questions to students and allow them to respond and answer in their own way. The benefit of being able to go to one solution provider to get the seamless integration of all the products working together in that environment. Why is data-driven decision-making important for schools? Well, schools have always collected a lot of data and a lot of information. Uh, what they've done with it is often put it into file cabinets or send it on to, uh, you know, from the school they send it to the district, from the district they send it to the state or to the federal government. Uh, but what we're really asking schools to do with data-driven decision-making is bring that all that information they've gathered back down to the school and to the classroom, to the teacher and even to the student to give them the information that they need to succeed. Because we recognize that data gives you a much more objective way of understanding and measuring how you're doing. It also gives you information about what different what things you could do differently to make a difference. Um, it's really about the process of making better choices based on appropriate analysis and relevant information. And I would imagine that um, in the era of No Child Left Behind that that's even more important for schools to consider. Exactly. Schools are being held accountable. They're being asked to show that every school is uh, every student is meeting certain criteria and meeting the standards and making progress. And in order to make that progress, you can't just measure student, student achievement at the end of the year and hope they made the progress. You really have to start putting information in, g gathering information throughout the year and feeding that back to the teacher and the student and the principal so that they can adjust their lesson plans, adjust their instructional me methods, even in some cases adjusting, adjusting bus schedules so that students are getting to class on time. Or simple things like changing um, le uh, me when meal schedules so that students aren't tired in the afternoon. Or you know, there, there, there's a lot more than just test scores that go into data-driven decision making. And if I'm a school district that uh, ha has not uh, been doing this practice before, how would I go about starting data-driven decision-making? Well, one of the biggest challenges for starting a data-driven decision-making process is getting the data to talk to each other. So 
like I said before, districts have a, a lot of data from student test scores to student attendance to uh, information about teachers um, to information about facilities and, and classrooms. And so you have to take all those silos of data and figure out a way to make that communicate with each other. Um, once you've done that, which is a huge step in the process, the next step is really the analysis of that information. How do you query it? How do you create a system so that you can easily ask questions of it? Um, and what I've seen a lot of that that's really where the leadership comes in um, at all levels for the district, the school, um, even teacher leaders within organizations where you start creating teams of practice um, and uh, those teams of practice take on the big issues, um, the, uh, take initial, an initial issue and focus in on that, figure out, determine what data would be used to measure that, and then uh, start to put into practice the data making decision model. And once they, at, what we found is that after school districts initially start to use data driven decision making, um, at first, you know, the questions might be very obvious, but um, over time they become more sophisticated in their use. This eSchool News interview from the 12th Annual Cozen Conference will continue after this message. CCC, the new leader in video on demand, offers the best in core curriculum content, not recycled television. Our content partners are the nation's most respected producers of educational media. CCC offers thousands of programs and tens of thousands of teaching segments, all correlated to state, national, and Canadian standards. It's education, not edutainment. For more information on CCC Video On Demand, visit ndmccc.com. In looking at all of the research and the case studies that you've done around this area, uh, what are some of the keys to success that have emerged? I think one really important thing to remember is that it's not a one-time thing. You aren't going to be able to suddenly uh, raise all of your test scores because uh, you've implemented one aspect of data-driven decision making. It's really about continuous improvement. So the districts that are successful in using data-driven decision-making have made a commitment to be learning organizations. And sometimes that means recognizing that some, something is not working or recognizing that maybe the perfect query or analysis form that a district set up is not something is not the way teachers think about the information or would ask the question. So if it won't work for the teachers, then it's it, 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 you need to acknowledge that and change the system and really work with the whole organization in order to make it last. And where can school districts go to get more information about this? On the COSIN website, what the Data Driven Decision Making um, Project or Initiative has its own website. It's www3, uh, the numeral 3, d2, the numeral 2, no.org. Or you can just go to the COSIN front page and uh, click the link from there. But on that site, we've got uh, several white papers, uh, compendium articles, um, as well as case studies of many school districts of all sizes. This isn't just for big or small school districts. It's, it's really any school district can take this on. Um, we also have a self-assessment self tool. So it's an opportunity for you to answer a few questions and determine where you are in the process. And most school districts are getting to the collecting the data part. They're very good at that. But the analysis part is the next step. And then the actual ability to act on that data and act on that analysis is really the big challenge here. And Computing's mission is to get a computing station in front of every student at every school. Our technology works by installing an end computing PCI card into a normal desktop PC. You then take a simple networking cable and connect it to an end station box. All you have to do then is install our software, a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, and you are ready to go. With the end computing stations, you can expand one host by up to seven stations. This means that effectively you are turning one PC into the equivalent of seven PCs for a fraction of the cost of buying a new PC. 